paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's, it's an, an idea. idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the fullest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. Um, we have here me, Dave Kelso, of course, and we have Max Egan back again, and it's always a pleasure to have him. And we have Katarina Roy, also known as Katarina Edwards Roy, and it's obviously always a pleasure to have her. And, of course, last minute's um, arrival that wasn't originally planned, but here she is, Kristen Meyer. And, um, yeah, this was originally going to be like a YouTube live stream, but like between energetics and the elites and technology and whatever other factors are, are going into this, um, it's just, it's been real, really interesting. Like, you know, you try to, to load up the Hangouts on Firefox at the time and it claims Firefox is about to, to cut plug-in support. Well, it says that for some of us anyway. For people like Max Egan, he can go in on other people's Hangouts, but not other people's Hangouts for no reason because unicorns, because just 2017 is what it is. And Kristen was also having a hard time getting into the Hangout, even though she was using her phone, which is Android, which for all intents and purposes is Chrome, and it should freaking work. So the only people that were able to get in on the actual Hangout end of it were me and Katarina. So we aborted that, and now we're doing just this Skype, you know, pre-record thing, and I'm going to manually render it and all that good stuff. And it's like, eh, crazy, crazy. So we're here to talk on practical application of unconditional love because I don't know about all of you. I'm sick of the infighting, the political correctness and stuff. And it's just time to stand stand up and say, hey, you know, let's look at what real love is. We can all agree to disagree where we agree to disagree and we can all work together to unite to make this world a better place and nothing but stupid ego games are stopping us. So I'd like to talk about, you know, the paradigms that get in our way of really applying the real unconditional love, not the fake it till you make it, and move into the actual application. You know, because a lot of people think that unconditional love and compassion is this airy-fairy Pollyanna abstraction, and it's really not. It's totally practically appliable. So who who wa who wants to, to to start us off on on their their take on on that? Who who would who would like to dive in first? Everyone jumps to the jumps to the fore. Oh, of course. I was thinking, I was thinking, <laughs> it, would be, I was thinking it would be nice to let the ladies go first. But so I, mean, I I think unconditional love is important, but it's also understanding what that is. I mean, like you say, it's not something fluffy. You know, I mean, I I do what I do out of love, and sometimes I'm quite angry, and I. I can be quite in your face but the reason i do that is out of love for this species out of love for humanity i mean we can't allow the world to continue to be run by criminals and a lot of this is because of our refusal to love those around us you know our, our denial of what's really happening to our brothers and sisters so i mean yeah i think it's important but uh, i'd like to hear the ladies uh, the ladies point of view on it okay well the unconditional love thing is something that I have had a lot of practice with in my friendship with Dave and in my relationship with my husband. And it's been recently that I've been learning how to apply it just with people in my everyday life uh, beyond just my interpersonal relationships. And, and I feel like the idea of being able to have unity on this planet, um, to be able to have unity within the different communities we're a part of, there is a distinct need for this application of unconditional love because a lot of us have very differing points of view and we have different places that we're coming from and different life experiences and different, um, different backgrounds overall. And 
the idea of being able to to respect one another and seemingly be able to get along seems to be kind of lost in this world nowadays that I, I've been seeing just a lot of division that happens just for no apparent reason, you know, people taking offense. And, um, you know, this past political season was a complete show of that. And we still are even continuing it on now today, just in a different way. But I feel like this need for unconditional love is something that is really doable, as I've demonstrated in my own relationships over and over again. There's this distinct um, sense of acceptance that is pervasive in the application of unconditional love. And people seem to think that unconditional love is something that we can't do as humans. Like, no, that's that's reserved only for Jesus. Like, oh, that's only reserved for people like the Buddha or Krishna or whatever. You know, people who are ascended and higher and not their lowly selves with all of their divisive thoughts and everything. But um, it, it is something that you can practice. And the way that I like to practice it is just really by looking at the other person and realizing that they have the right to be themselves and that there is a place that I can get to within myself that looks at that person and sees that they are worthwhile, even if I don't agree with them, that they are here on this planet for a reason, even if I don't agree with them. And even the elites, even the people who are crazy war criminals and just completely batshit crazy, uh, they, they also have their place. And it's kind of really amazing to be able to get to that place of just understanding that they have their purpose and their function and, you know, for all intents and purposes, God's using them in his own unique way and for his own unique purposes. And I can't say that they should be extinct from the earth, like even though they are crazy terrible. So okay. that's, yeah, you, you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like Max's idea of just sending them all off to an island and if and give them the opportunity to get along with each other. And if they want to kill each other, then, you know, that's not on oh, us. That would be like the worst family reunion ever. <laughs> it kind of okay. would, wouldn't it? You know, the thing is, you know, like with these, these people, I mean, I... I I look at Hillary Clinton and I, I can love her as I love any human being. Yes, that's but, the unconditional um, love I, part right there. Yeah, but I, I don't expect that I can love her into doing the right thing because Not she has morals or passion. It's it's, <laughs> it's no point wasting that energy and directing it to her. I would I would look at the people that she's hurting and I love them just as much as her and I will stand up against her to prevent her from hurting other people. Um, that's it's, it's totally the same thing, you know. If, I, if I'm a, if I'm attacked by a psychopath, I mean, I will I will defend myself, but not out of hatred for the psychopath. I'll do it out of love for myself and the people that this psychopath is 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 affecting. Exactly. If you so have, it's, if, it's, if, it's knowing the practical application of of counter violence and when it should be applied, and and to not do that sort of thing from a state of anger or hatred towards the perpetrators. Right, totally. because then you're perpetuating it, and it's just this endless cycle of retaliation and retribution, exactly. and, and it just gets really messy. Exactly. So I think it's really important to make that distinction when you say you've got to be, uh, you know, have show love for these people. Absolutely, you can show love for them, but I think we're far too tolerant of their actions. Yeah. I don't think we should be so tolerant of what. Yeah. They're doing. For the uh, record, that's not what I was saying. I was really yeah. speaking more in your direction oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. So I yeah, have I just think plenty of. I think yeah. I can. I think I can. I think I can give a simple clarifier. When when the rabid dog needs to put down, the vet doesn't have hate in their heart when they do it. It's right. not. It's not like, Ur, I'm hating. Ur, rabid dog. Ur. They're not filling themselves with this cancer of hate, but they know that if they don't put the rabid dog down, that 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 dog is going to be a massive danger to to itself and everyone around it, and that there's just no other course of action in that moment. Um, well, that's, 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 that, that's one way to look at it, you know, with a rabid dog, but a rabid dog is kind of in a, in a state of, uh, you know, out of control. Yeah. But what about when you've got people that are in control, you know, like the analogy of, um, if you're on a, if you're on a lifeboat and you're heading for an island and you've got a lifeboat full of people and family and children and someone gets up and starts rocking the boat and people start falling overboard, how many people do you allow to fall overboard? before you throw the guy rocking the boat off the boat. Yeah, totally. My na my analogy was just to, to make the point that you don't have to fill your heart with hate while you're doing what needs to be done. That was literally yeah. my only point. My yeah, only yeah, point. Exactly. Now, Kristen, exactly. Kristen um, let's be fair here and uh, let Kristen say a few words. What do you think this um, unconditional love stuff is, and um, how do you think it should be applied? What's, what's your perspective on what all that's about? Okay, well, um, a lot of 
my perspective um, about how it, it goes with the greater world was covered by Max. I agree with a lot of that. And same thing with Katarina. Um, and I, I like that. Um, by the way, someone's calling in. If you hear a beeping, that's what that is. But um, <clears throat> basically... My own personal experiences with unconditional love are, they are pretty personal to me. What I've gathered from a lot of them is that every single person has so much inside of them, um, so much of everything, so much pain and love. And well, I wouldn't say everyone has love, but everyone's got a lot underneath the surface and not all of it's good. And we're, compl- we're complicated and intricate people. Um, and what it's been for me is that you have to be able to, um, separate your idea of what you want someone to be for you from what they actually are and people aren't always going to fit into your mold of what you think is the most perfect thing sometimes it means they're going to disagree with you sometimes there's just going to do things that you really that really want to make you scream but a lot of it's just letting control go and realizing that even if you know what they're doing isn't good for them they have a right to do that and learn from their experiences and in the long run that's the best thing because People have a right to make destructive decisions and learn from them. And sometimes that's the only way to learn. You know, that's true. I think the big problem that we have is is we we project these weird expectations on people that that are created from, you know, our own insecurity, seeing as we do live in a very repressed, um, (laughs) enslaved society. And when we feel that we can't bring our, our full selves to the surface, then obviously we're looking for authorities, we're looking for gurus, we're looking for babysitters, politicians, so on. So people put all their love and support behind these corrupt politicians when really they don't even realize that all, all they're all they're looking for is that is that love really I mean they're looking for that love and acceptance and because they're not getting it they they get sucked into these you know oh bow to authority figures blindly blindly believe them about everything and so on and we have the, the mess that we're in um, I also think that because of all these insecurities we have a massive addiction to at least the idea of appearing correct as if appearing correct in front of our peers and so-called superiors and whatever, as if that is like the one singular only important thing ever, period, which is also why there's all, all the fighting online, even between people in the truth movement, spiritual movements and whatever, are supposed to be allies. Um, an interesting experience that I think all of you witnessed yesterday, or at least Kat- and Katerina and, and Kristen did, I'm not sure what Max was doing, but on Facebook, I just posted a thing about exactly how and why we all need to stop fighting and that the people who claim that they have informational and awareness superiority, that I'm just going to hold them to a higher standard because they're holding themselves to, to, to a higher standard. And a, a few people got offended by that. They felt They felt attacked by a post that I was saying, let's not attack people. And they felt attacked by that. The funny thing is, is the people who felt attacked weren't even a part of any spiritual or truth or whatever movements or whatever, just, you know, regular people. And the ones that felt attacked, they actually surprised me the most because they were the ones that I thought would be least likely to to feel attacked. And they ended up being, being the most likely. So I think even the idea of, some, of, some, of someone just saying, hey, let's all get along. That comes off to people as, what, you mean, you're, you're telling me we're not getting along? Are you accusing me of something? Ha, ha, ha. You know, they get all angsty than if you say something positive. You know, that's why I tell people, oh, regardless of what you say or how you say it, some people just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy and people are just going to take things how they take things. That's not your fault. You didn't cause that. Um, so the only thing you could do is just be loving back to them and just say, hey, you know, you're coming at me at a point of misunderstanding and, you know, if you want to keep coming at me at that point, that's your choice. I'm not going to fight with you or hate you or whatever, but just let, you know, you're coming from a point of misunderstanding and everything just, it was civil, even though there was a, there was a bit of butthurt, uh, everything was way more civil than, than I thought it would be and it actually surprised me. Oh, and supposedly uh, on Easter, you know, just a few days ago, uh, the Schumann residence hit 90 hertz 
Uh, what do you all think uh, are the implications of that? I personally think there's quite a bit of unconditional love and all of that, you know, implications. And even even in the in the negative context, like Max said, sometimes unconditional love is expressed as as yelling and screaming and hell no, we won't go when enough is enough. So what do y'all what, what do y'all think of the Schumann res- resonance thing? I don't know what uh, that is. Um, Max, do you want to explain the Schumann resonance or should I? Well, the Schumann resonance is the is the the cavity resonance of the Earth, really. I mean, I'd like to, to find some evidence of, of it going up. But I mean, I've heard whether it's been going up and going down. I mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to find some way of confirming it before I was willing to comment on it. Yeah. Well, it's still okay to have an opinion. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, I mean, I think that we're we're connected. I mean, everything's energetic, and so we're if if the resonance is rising, then of course we're rising with it, and everything on the Earth is rising with it. Um, what that means is anybody's guess. But uh, as I said, I'd like to have confirmation. I mean, I've, I've felt things are very, very strange energetically lately. There's, there's definitely changes coming or there's something happening. I mean, everything has been very, very strange energetically and everybody that I know is feeling it. Maybe it's just because I'm in L.A. at the moment. It's really weird here, I've got to tell you. But uh, I've been having a lot of energetic crazy too, as have we all. I mean, this is the, the first time I've been nasty sick since 2012, so... No, even the people when I was in Hawaii were, were feeling the energy was changing. Something, something's different. You know, things are really starting to come to a head. Mm-hmm. This whole political situation, yeah. the global situation, everything's coming to a head, and nobody's really being fooled by the global situation at the moment. But uh, and there's all sorts of stuff happening, like you say, to squeeze us out, and uh, like all the trouble we had connecting to this hangout and everything today. So you know, there's so many things going. on. You notice they're squeezing us out in YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. They're just changing all the algorithms so you can't share stuff. That's how they're doing it. They're not really closing people down. They're just kind of sweeping people away off into the distance, putting them behind that. the curtains. Yeah, I, I, I did a search for one of my films yesterday. I was sitting here with Benny and we were doing an experiment. I went on YouTube and I put in my name and one of my films and it took six pages before I got to, actually got to my film. I got to everybody huh. else's up, upload of my film, but I didn't get to my upload of my film until the sixth page when I put my name in with it. Interesting. So, you know so what? I, even if people are searching for my film, they'll find the film, but they'll yeah. find it on another channel that will not have the content that my channel's got. You know what I'm wow. saying? So they're doing everything they can to try to squeeze people away and squeeze people out. I had one woman had to subscribe to my channel 14 times in one day before the subscription would take. I've been, so, I, I, I've been, I, I've been bumped off your channel a few times in the past. Not so much recently, but in in the past, I've had to keep resubscribing as well. And um, by the way, according to YouTube, and when I saw this, I, I totally laughed. Apparently, according to use it, to YouTube, Max, the name Max Egan equals not advertiser friendly content. So I take that as a compliment if I were you. Really? <laughs> yes. Interesting. You know the the, the last hangout we did. Yeah. Um, it was monetized and everything, but then it got kicked up in the system. And I mean, the video's still there and all that, but it's it's in yellow. The little dollar signs in yellow, and it says that it's not advertiser friendly content. It's like oh, and, and there and there's a there's a thing I uploaded just a montage of some of some of your opening stuff, and that isn't advertiser friendly content either because the word Max Egan is in there, and and a and, and a Ma- Max Egan to the to the elites is like a cross holy water and garlic. Apparently, they want nothing to do with it. Well, interesting. <laughs> I wonder if that's because my YouTube account isn't isn't monetized. I mean, I've never monetized my account, so whether it's just my name, who knows. Hmm. Yeah, I, it's just your name, I think. I mean, you're you're like really the only Max Egan floating around that I know of. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah interesting. You're, you're just like you're, you're like holy water on the digital faces of the elites. <laughs> interesting, interesting. I mean, it's really one of the most suppressed channels on YouTube. I think um, it really is. The what the amount they delete my subscribers, I see them drop my view count. <laughs> like I've got I've got my my film The Awakening is uploaded to my channel. It's got ninety thousand views. Um, someone else uploaded it to their channel like just two years ago, and it's got 620,000 views. Wow. So <laughs> what has it really got on my channel, you know? Um, I've really got to wonder. So they, they really do suppress it, and they, they try to slip it under the carpet and bury it under the rug as much as they can without actually closing it down because that would attract too much attention. Yeah. By the way, just to let you and other people know, there's there's a site that's been up for about as long as YouTube called Daily Motion that I also use and – um, their monetization is fair. They don't politically censor. Um, if any glitches happen on the site or something accidentally gets taken down, you could talk to a real human being, and they're just like, oh, sorry, that happened by accident. Here, your video's restored. Thank you. So um, Daily Motion, 
um, has has been a, a really cool place so for me personally to upload video it's not quite as advanced as, as YouTube of course but um, I think that it's it's good enough for for a lot of things as far as what people are mad at YouTube for and are tired of certain crap being pulled and Daily Motion doesn't doesn't pull it they're a French company okay yeah well anyway we're getting back onto the topic I mean I yep. think the fact that they are censoring so much stuff. And repressing so much stuff shows that maybe maybe the energy is rising. I mean, maybe people are becoming more and more aware, and so they're having to take more and more steps to reduce the availability of information to people. Yeah, totally. And you know, they're doing all these little subtle things to try to, to try to get people fighting. And the only the only thing I, I could think think of for the reason that things happened the way they did yesterday in a more positive way is the rise of the energetics and unconditional love and all that. Because in the past, that situation that I had on Facebook would have been a disaster. Um, it would have had everybody arguing and yelling at each other and, and, you know, the usual kerfuffle. But that didn't happen. Everybody was just like chill, even though they were a little butthurt. Um, everybody was just like chill and civil and, and respectful. So let's hope that that continues as a, as a global trend. And as far as what, what you were saying about, you know, it's no secret any anymore to the way the world operates. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of people that are still in, in denial just because it's hard to face, but the only reason they're raging in denial is because they really are starting to see it. And it's like, oh, God, I don't want to look at that. What's well, like too late? What's been seen cannot be unseen. Yeah. Totally. Katerina, Kristen, um, um, either of your thoughts uh, continuing on unconditional love and the state of the world and, and, and how we can just kind of navigate, uh, you know, through through this stuff as it continues to get more interesting and keep our, our wits about us and not, not lose our integrity and to continue to remain in our authenticity. Um, your thoughts? Well, if Kristen uh, doesn't have anything right now or doesn't want to go yet, I'll talk. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I, the most helpful thing I can do is just share what I've been doing and how I've been navigating all of it because, you know, I have been getting more and more after a lot of years of being more of a hermit and, uh, being more introverted and doing all of my deep reflective work myself and being in Costa Rica and all the different places I've lived. Like I've now been feeling called to come back more into the world and be a part of communities this year. So I come into contact with a lot of people um, a lot more often now. And I've been noticing that I have been developing my own ability to really stay centered within myself as I'm going around with other people and being being subject to their energy and their perspectives and their beliefs and their opinions and their ideas, which often are very different from mine. And um, I, I have been finding that it's helpful to, like I said before, you know, to be able to, to respect their right to, to have their own opinions and their own views and, and to know also that when they are doing stuff that just does not feel right to me. Like I'm, I'm very connected to my own heart. And when I feel that something's off about a person, I'm, I'm very quick to uh, look at that and decide whether or not I want to continue to stay involved with this person. And, and it's not out of maliciousness anymore. It's not about hating the other person. It's just about understanding what is beneficial for both parties at the time. So, um, you know, you guys were talking about it in terms of like the elites and stuff, but on a very practical level, like what do we do with the people who are quote unquote, like the elites in our own lives, you know, the people who are kind of tyrannical or narcissistic or abusive in any capacity. So for me, um, I've just been sensing more and more deep inside of myself, like who is somebody who actually is, is beneficial for me. And so I'm been taking steps to be able to not have to spend time around those people because like, like I said, like, well, Max said earlier that you can't unconditionally love somebody out of being crazy and narcissistic because they still have free will. They can, they can do as they please. And, um, you know, we can inspire and, and help open minds with unconditional love, but ultimately it's the choice of the other people. So we don't want to make ourselves doormats in effort to love people at the same time because we still need to take care of ourselves and be loving towards ourselves and to be respectful of our own boundaries and our own limits and our own capacities. So um, that's, that's really how I've been approaching it, Dave. So what about you? Kristen. Beautifully said, beautifully said, Katarina. 
Thank you. Totally. I, I, I fully and completely agree. And, you know, I think Katerina also makes a good point as, as far as on the comparison to, you know, our, you know, regular, you know, average person life, uh, narcissists and control freaks versus the elites and how they, the, you know, the, we, we've kind of inherited that situation from the elites, right? As above, so below right, and all that. Exactly. And, you know, I also think that, a big part of the problem is, you know, again, putting people on, on pedestals and these labels and stuff like celebrities are just regular people. And you've got as much of a chance of bumping into them as anybody else. Case in point, just the other day, Katarina ran into um, Tina one, Tyler of Aerosmith in the grocery store. My point <laughs> in mentioning it is these are just regular people. I mean, <laughs> we, we have to imagine ourselves as celebrities looking out of the celebrities' eyes, and if we can successfully do that, guess what we find? They're just people within their career field. Just like you've got teachers and doctors and lawyers and firefighters and baggers at Walmart and whatever, and we just we, we get these opinions about these career fields, and we, we begin to think that one is more valid or righteous than another, and then we put the position on a pedestal, and then we put the person on a pedestal, and we end up inadvertently surrendering our our own power to false authority and mm -hmm. I think that this is a big problem uh, what do you think Kristen I, I think I know that you have at least one or two family members that are that do a, more than just a little power tripping and are caught in that uh, authoritarian meme uh, what do you have to say say about it and and how have you handled it Kristen like how have you gotten through it I, I know it's been hard well to be honest I've had a big problem with um, Taking it, you know, taking like perceived authority figures in my own life, and usually they're like certain members of my family, or um, just I've been, I would really um surrender my power to them in a lot of ways, and then kind of play the role of the person who beats herself up over every little thing. And compassion for others, um, for me has only become real when I really have a sense of compassion for myself too, because for the longest time I kind of lied to myself, and I would say me doing everything for everyone else is a good thing and it's me being loving but under the surface resentments were building up so much and I felt completely depleted and I felt completely alone and and I've been really coming to face that a lot recently so now it's like it's really hard for me to put into words as of where I am right now but cultivating a sense of respect you're, 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 do, you're doing a great job, Kristen. Don't worry about it. Just speak for, speak from the heart, say what you need to say, and it's cool. You're doing fine. Um, just a sense of compassion for all the different aspects of yourself, all of your feelings, and then once you do that, you can look at someone else around you and not explode on them um, for the parts of them that you disapprove of. It's like I've noticed that every time I – have a hard time accepting something about someone else and not necessarily tolerating it, but accepting it um, point where I don't, if I like, if I didn't accept something that someone else was doing, I would go and I would destroy everything. And that's hard to describe, but if it was a relationship with someone, I would sabotage them and myself over it. Um, and what I've realized is that everything I've disapproved of in other people, there's been something that I disapprove of in myself that it brings up. Um, and that might not have as much to um, relate to with, like, the elites and the political situations where, you know, people are just sitting idly by and giving their power away. It does. It totally does. You're, you're, you're right on point, Kristen. Keep going. Oh, okay. It's like, now I'm getting to a point where I can see that sometimes these things that have been happening in my life, the resentments that have built up, they've been because people have been walking all over me and people have been doing things they shouldn't have to me. But then other times, you know, I'm seeing that a lot of that's because of my lack of boundaries and um, my unwillingness to be there for myself. So I'm looking to others to fill the void and looking to others to validate me on every level. And so everyone's disapproval, if it's there, cuts way, way deeper than it should. And I've been my harshest critic. And now it's like I'm tired of every time that I criticize myself that harshly and I sabotage myself, it's sabotaging everyone else in my life. And the unconditional love that I'm coming across is letting myself be myself to the point where I'm taking advantage of what's in front of me so I can help people. Instead of criticizing every little thing I do and how I'm not where I want to be right now, like, 
I'm thinking of it in terms of potential wasted now, because so what, I'm not perfect. I can still help people in the way that I can help people right now. And who's to say, if I don't go, keep going now and take action now where I could be. And a lot of my standards for where I should be and where others should be aren't even my own. They're just shit that's been forced down my throat. And now my compassion is so deep that even when I'm in a moment where I'm really disapproving of myself or someone else, my hatred for the system that has made people the way they are is deeper than any disapproval I have for another person. It's I'm learning where to channel the anger and the disgust and the disapproval instead of towards myself or the people that I really love. And that's way different. I'm not pretending I don't get mad at others, but I'm trying to scale it back and see what's producing it in, as far as the whole system. See, and Kristen right here is just a total evidence of the shift and evidence that it's all just regular people. So many people think, oh, well, you're not shifted unless you're some super high guru or or you have a PhD and an MD in spiritual sciences or, you know, blah, 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 blah. When really what people need to need to hear from is people like you being regular people and just being authentic and honest and just, you know, just being like, look, this is this is what's up and enough is enough. So I think that that everything you said there, Kristen, was freaking perfect. Um, your take, Max. Oh, yeah, I'm a oh. very regular person for anyone that ends up listening to this. I am <laughs> so imperfect and not even any sort of guru or, guru or anything. And I wish that I could speak better. But you speak same, better than you I'm think. Realizing that it's, I'd rather speak from where I'm at because there's a lot of people that are like me that can't always speak super eloquently, and they. You do though, Kristen. They want that, something that can. You do. <laughs> like some kind of hope, something that they relate to. So that's good. Max, would you please tell her that she speaks very eloquently because it, when 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 I tell her, it doesn't seem to hold weight. <laughs> so. No, I, I got what you were saying perfectly well. Then, then Kristen, I really did. I think you said it really oh, well. I'm, about that, thank you. <laughs> so don't stress on that. It was lovely to meet you last year, actually, at uh, the Rocky Farm gig as well. I do remember you, so it was lovely to catch hey. up. Hey, but um, yeah. Yeah, I see some of. The, I've done whole shows about some of the things you've, you've spoken about there. About you, you, you bottle up your emotions, you bottle up your feelings, and you get stomped on all the time. You, if you don't express your emotions when they happen, when you feel them, uh -huh. you bottle it up, and it comes out in other ways later. You come out, you end up with stomach problems, you end up with this and all that. There's all sorts of things, or you I start know. attacking people for no reason, all this sort of stuff that we do. And the difference between tolerance and acceptance, you know, these sorts of things. But yep. something you said there that, that I, I, I would point out to you when you said um, your hatred of the system over, over far surpasses um, uh, any other thing that you feel towards the people or whatever. What about superimposing that and not having hatred for the system at all? I mean, I don't, I don't hate the system. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the people that the system is infecting and hurting. Um, and I do what I do out of love for the people, out of love for myself and out of love for humanity, not out of any hatred for the system. The system is an idea. It's a meme. What perpetuates the system is our tolerance of evil and our, our, our unwillingness to support and respect each other. And the system is just this thing. It's just a meme. It's just an idea. You can't direct hatred at it. It's an inanimate object. It's, it's going to suck you dry if you direct hatred at it. You can rechannel that rather than feeling any hatred towards anything. Do it out of love for yourself and out of love for the people. And realize that you are perfect at being you with any imperfections you have along the way. These are just parameters that the system gives you. But you're perfect at seeing the world from the perspective that you've got. And it's what you do with that perspective. Now, what is perfection? You know, we're, we're out, out for this, this you know, thing that we think perfection is. But there is no real perfection except the perfectness of having the unique perspective that you have and what you do with that information. You know, so and it's all about the journey. It's about the journey. So it's what you do with the little pebbles and the little things that you gather along the way, and what you can build out of that. You know, I totally love all three of you guys, and you all speak so beautifully. And and all three of you, of course, have have moments where you're kind of hard on yourself because that's how humans roll. But you know, that happens. But I just I just want to say I I just I love being on with you Max and with you Kristen and with you Katerina and I I just think that so so far this is a, a really awesome call even though it didn't go you know the whole live stream way like we wanted um, it's still really really awesome and just I, I think it's it's really important to me especially for for all of us to be talking the way we're talking right now because. 
you know, we are, we all, we all kind of, we all kind of look up to each other and we influence each other and, and it's all a positive thing and we all kind of help each other work out our issues just by being ourselves, not, not, not because we're, we're seeing each other as broken and trying to fix some broken thing or whatever, but, you know, it really come, we, we're all speaking out of this place of love and this place of authenticity. And like you said, Max, you know, love can have sadness, love can have anger, love can be middle fingers all over the place. It's, not a Pollyanna thing, and and this show or episode or whatever you want to call it, um, it, it's I think is a perfect example of what unconditional love is and the application of it. You know, it's not about going into Pollyanna denial, fake love and light and whatever. I'm, I mean, there is such a thing as real love and light, obviously. I'm talking about the, the fake, you know, but none of this is this is just so real and so authentic and so human. And I think it's it's what we need right now. We don't need political saviors. We don't need spiritual gurus. We just need real fucking people willing to talk. And this is exactly what this is. And I love this so much. And I I want to do this so much more. And I, I know that everybody's got their schedules and we line up when we can. But that I just this is so I just love this so much and I'm I just really appreciate all of you and I'm when you when you guys come on I'm just I am really thankful and I'm really filled with gratitude. You have a beautiful heart, Dave. You're you're a beautiful man and thank you for what you do, brother. Th th thank you, sir. I mean, I've I've been listening to you probably since you started, since you know when when you could actually customize YouTube and. You know, back back in the good old days of it, I, I'm if I haven't been listening to you from the beginning, I've been listening to you from almost the beginning. <laughs> well, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I hope the shows have, have helped people. You know, and it it does get difficult. I mean, you get trolled. I mean, I, I lash out at people. People come and attack me on my threads, and I, I I give them I give them a mouthful back. I do. But even doing that, I mean, I do it out of love. I do it out of frustration. I just get so frustrated out of doing this for so many years to have people still coming and attacking you because you haven't and said what they want, so they call you an idiot in their first comment. I mean, and then they expect you to not respond with, with something and say, well, you know, what are you here to offer, something more constructive or, or what, you know? So, you know, we, we've got to allow people to think differently and, and allow people to put ideas on the table and just respect each other without shouting each other down all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Uh, I, uh, and you can ask Katarina and Kristen, I do my best to deal with the trolls and stuff very lightheartedly. Like if someone, like take for example someone coming, oh you're an idiot, blah blah blah. I'll just be like, well totally, yes I am. How else do you expect me to act? Why are you wasting your time if I'm if I'm such an idiot? Of course I'm an idiot. You've got better things to do. Go do them. And they don't they don't know how to respond. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's the way. I mean, it, but it does get frustrating. I mean, and, and I I woke up when I was four. You know, I've, I've been sort of banging my head against this system for for the last you know fifty six years, and it, it gets a little tiring after a while. You know, and you get a little short tempered now and then. Yeah, I mean, we're 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 all partially subject to um, you know to the paradigms that we've grown up with, and especially the older we are and it can be you know it, it can be challenging there's a, there's an old saying which i don't think is true it says you can't you can't teach an old dog new tricks when really i think a different analogy is needed it's more like the bigger the mess you've made for yourself the longer it takes to clean it up and it's neither good nor bad it just is so people that have been <laughs> caught in certain patterns, if they want to shift out of them, it takes them longer the older they are, which which is not a knock on anybody. It's, I mean, it's to be expected. Bigger messes take more time to clean up, right? It's not good. It's not bad. It just is. But if you if you clean it up, it, it will get cleaned. There, it's not like, oh my God, there's a big mess. I just can't clean it up. I should just forget about it. I, it's too much. No, everybody's capable. And the bigger the mess, it's going to take longer. But that's okay. It, you know, a lot of people think. Especially as they get older, oh, oh, I, I'm not as capable anymore, and blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. You've just got bigger messes to clean up, but that's okay. Clean them up. You're just as capable as anybody else. Don't, you know, the poor little me thing is such a lie. Yeah, it is. It really is. Totally. So, um, Katarina, um, anything? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm recovering from being sick, so please excuse my throat acting up a little bit periodically. So, Katarina, um, <laughs> your thoughts on all of this because obviously um yeah i, I talk too much so go ahead <laughs> you talk too much you talk a perfect amount Dave. it's fine well thank you well excuse me i'm sorry i did wake up like two minutes before we were supposed to be on this call so i'm like still sort of revving up the engines 
Um, mm, so clarify for me, Dave, my thoughts on all of this about trolls and just about like, and you've been you've been dealing with it with it recently in person from what you've been telling me, you know, and just approaching it from a more lighthearted, unconditional love space and still at the same time giving yourself permission to be angry. Because mm-hmm. I, I personally found that it's it, it, the more you let yourself be angry, the easier it is to calm down and not be angry. But if you try to do like the whole politically correct thing, um, it just builds up in, inside of you and and just, you know, makes you crazy. Um, when a lot of these politically correct fools talk about, oh, tolerance and trying not to offend people, I, I just straight up tell them, Tolerance is about learning how to not be offended. It's not about learning um, how to not offend people. Because oh, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a really tough bag right there. Yeah. I feel like I can't even just, like, breathe or open my mouth without offending somebody these days. It's, same, it's hilarious. Same here. <laughs> Hell, I, I was I was joking about that with with Krista on the one message thread. I'm sure you thought you saw, you know, the one where where everybody was like was like triggered and uh, and I half jokingly because well it's also true. I'm like she she's like oh well you know you're gonna risk offending people sometimes. I'm like hey I run that risk every time I open my mouth, and and she's like yeah, yeah. and she's like yeah you do and I'm like no sense denying it and she's like well if you did deny it I'd call you a liar and I'm like <laughs> right, I'm like rightly so <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, I've been dealing with this really, um, really nuts lady at work that she has just been. Oh, looks like we lost Kristen. Oh, keep t- keep talking. Yeah. I'll reconnect yeah. her. Okay. Um, I've been dealing with this really nuts lady at work that um, she has just been. You know, you say, "Hey, how are you?" And she's just like, "Well, blah, 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 like and just." Everything, everything is going wrong in her world. Everything, absolutely everything. Nothing, nothing's going good at all. Nothing at all. So it, it's really interesting to have a conversation with this person because she will just derail it into a place where you don't actually want to go. And um, Kristen, you here? Yep. Just Sorry. checking. Sorry, go ahead, Katerina. Um, just to catch you up, Kristen, she's Katerina's talking about an unruly um coworker who is just urgh, just grumpy kitty. Blah, everything. Just grumpy kitty about everything. Victimization. Um, Poor little me. I'm the victim. That kind of attitude. Yes. And of course, I can look at her and be like, yeah, me five years ago, I was pretty much that way. I mean, I I looked at things in that from those lenses, so I can have compassion for her. But at the same time, um, I have to pray a lot while I'm there, you know, so I center myself and I'm, you know, sometimes working three feet away from her and she just has like this, this constant outpouring of victimization. And it was bothering me like it really was because it would get to this point where, you know, I would feel deflated all the time just being around her. And I was like, all right, well, this is my this is my lesson in, in learning how to be more sovereign in my own personal choice of joy uh when i'm you know here at work like i'm i'm only working here like two days a week and i chose this job because i wanted to be able to be around more people and to be able to be um you know reaching more people and talking to more people in the community and to to have somebody like this is great training ground for me because you know i have for so long been able to really choose who i get to be around and so i've been really practicing more with just continuing to like allow myself to be myself when I'm around her and you know the other night it actually got to a point where I had just been continuing to do that like all night until she actually directed her her anger and victimization towards me and it hurt you know it hurt like so I can understand that feeling of like like being punched in the heart like it just it it sucks when you're doing all you can to really just to bring your love out of you and give it to other people and to have people just kind of attack you. But that's, that's sort of the energy physics of it though. You know, so if you want to look at it from that dark light paradigm, you can see that, you know, the more you turn on the light in the room, the more the darkness flees and and hates it and just is so disgusted by it and just doesn't want it because it's uncomfortable and it's different and boo, (laughs) you know, like that kind of stuff. And I could feel that in her. And I, you know, I was annoyed and bothered at first and I took it in myself and I was like, all right, so that happened. 
And it's not that I just laid down and played dead. Like I, I matched her back and, and I was very clear back and I wasn't angry back. I didn't hate her back, but I definitely stood up and was like, you know, I know you have this problem with me and I will do better to be more attentive to it and in the future, but I, I didn't cower. And that was really new for me because in the past I would have just, like you said, Max just bottled it up and just stuffed it away and, you know, gotten the stomach ache later or the headache later or whatever, and just kind of pushed it aside. But that but, that is what. Well, yeah, you know, and if you can if you can express it at the, at, at the moment, then you find that you don't hang on to it. But if you can express it and not hang on to it, not hold grudges, it really helps. You know, your emotions are there for a reason, so you should embrace them. You know. Yeah, it tell does. Me, I just got I just got a very interesting synchronistic ref- reflection right now that just popped up. Remember that conversation I was telling you about where people are getting butt hurt? Um, someone responded saying. Allow me to hazard a guess, okay? The fearful calling out that you, you be a doing, that'll be from the safety of a Facebook platform, right? We already have white knights and social justice warriors. Now, now we are going Facebook paladin. Grow the fuck up and concentrate on holding yourself to standards instead of others. If their doings hurt your poo-poo, your cho- choices, and you stop following them, which uh, you won't because then you can't hang upside down in your Facebook bat cave, or a large... <laughs> A large jar of butt paste. And I, I just simply respo- responded. I said, well, come to Chicago then, and let's not, on- known- uh, not only have an in-person discussion, but live streaming video on YouTube as well. So let's come out of our caves together, you game. And I'm not even kidding. Anybody who wants to meet up in person and, you know, like maybe get together at a restaurant that's got some Wi-Fi or something, hook in, do a, li- a live stream from a cafe and talk face to face, you know, get a hold of me. You know, let's let's meet up at, you know, the Burgundy or whatever. And, you know, let's have that physical reality in person conversation. If people like Jock Looch, that's his name, J-A-C-L-O-O-C-H. You know, if people like him feel so adamant that it's so horribly wrong to express yourself on the Internet and that it's a form of hiding. Well, that's cool. Come out of hiding then. I'm happy to, to meet anyone anywhere. Not for a fight, for a civil discussion, but, you know, if they, if they think that it's, it's, it's only not hiding if it's in person, then cool. Let, you know, anybody yeah. who wants to do that, hit, hit me, hit me up. Let's have some coffee and talk. Well, you know, people should get involved in the real world. That's why I'm out doing what I do. I get out and I speak to people. You know, I go to Gaza. I do what I can to, to make a difference. You know, we've got too many clicktivists out there and not enough activists. So, yeah, get involved in the real world. That's what people need to do. The real world still exists outside the computer screens, folks. That's, yeah, exactly why I decided to go be more in the real world and have to deal with people in the real world. Because, uh, you know, for so long I had been doing just stuff on the Internet and doing my art and helping people and all that so yeah. well i mean it's good you can reach a lot of people and, and yeah it, but you need to be really grounded to too. get out of the real world i mean and a lot of people say oh look at max he's out there traveling around the world living this high lifestyle it's not like that i'm couch surfing living you know from day to day most of the time you know skimping meals and you're going without sleep doing ridiculous amounts of travel to go and speak at gigs that i don't get paid for so you mm-hmm. know just to try to wake people up so it isn't like it's this glamorous thing but there comes a point where you've, you've actually got to get involved in the world that you live in. It isn't just an online world, you know. You know, we sit there in our own little social groups, and with all the algorithms they've got now, you're only really reaching your group. You're only really preaching to the choir very often online. You know, I still have people now who come saying, oh, my God, I've just discovered you. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. How have they just discovered me? Because it's all so suppressed, you know. Right. So you've got to get out in the real world and get involved. And the amount of re- incredible responses I have from people uh, going and speaking at these conferences and just, you know, go to a, a place where they've got a soapbox. So like in London, you can go down to Hyde Park and just get up on the soapbox and just have your, your spiel and see who gathers around to listen. These sorts of things help. Just get out there and get involved in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And for, with that, you, it requires a lot of ability to be able to hold your own and have that interpersonal sense of sovereignty. I think a lot of people... Like I know myself for I was very afraid of getting out in the real world for so long because of my own abuse and trauma and all of that. And it, it just was like, I'd rather do anything besides do that because there's no Facebook block button in the real yeah. world. Yeah, <laughs> that's the hard thing. That's, that's something that I often that's something that I often forget. I mean, my, most people's greatest fear, I suppose, is public speaking, which is a, is a weird uh-huh. for me because I've, I've spent most of my life on stage as a guitar player. So I'm, I'm quite comfortable in front of a crowd. It's kind of weird speaking in front of a crowd, I suppose, but I don't really have a problem with it. So I guess I find it 
difficult to imagine why other people would have a problem simply opening up and saying what they're doing. <clears throat> oh, hey, by the way, this guy just backed out. <laughs> he said, no fucktard, I'll stay in the U.S. How about you come down t t Tennessee way and I'll show you. I'm not even going to read the rest of this. It's blah, 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 blah. But I said, yes, you caught me. Chicago is in North Korea. LOL, LOL, LOL. So, yeah, I'm like I don't even I, I have no desire to even fight with these people. I just laugh at these people. They say something crazy like I'll stay in the U.S. when I, I'm in Chicago. It's like, all right. Yeah, you caught me. Chicago's in North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And, and at the risk of, of sounding racist, and by the way, my origins, part of them are from Tennessee and Oklahoma and the South, not that this guy would know. But, um, yeah, at the risk of sounding, oh, my God, racist, I'll just say that this guy's a stupid, stereotypical um, redneck, and um, people like him are why the stereotype exists, and I'll go no further on that. If someone thinks I'm racist, so be it. People think I'm racist, just me saying hi. And because I'm white, you know, oh, being white in and of itself is racist. Welcome to George Orwell's world, you know. Oh, my God. It's so funny. I, I just, it's great. I'm, I can't help but laugh, honestly. I can't even get mad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting. This is, this is the problem, though, is that we, we constantly, we're constantly attacking and baiting each other. And we are, it's just a squabbling mess. You, know, you look at the response to the system. It's just a squabbling mess of people shouting each other down. You know, um, shouting any ideas anybody else has down. Oh, that's a silly idea. You're an idiot, you know. Um, or rather than trying to expand on it or offering something better. And, you know, we don't have the common focus of freedom is the problem. We're too busy fighting over our different details, over our different rabbit holes, our different belief systems. You know, the ruling cacistocracy who are running us into the ground, they agree to disagree on just about everything. But they have the focus of achieving complete human lockdown. And they are very, very focused on achieving that. But we do not have any common focus on achieving emancipation from slavery. We all have our different rabbit holes and we nitpick. You know, if you could, if you can imagine it as a, as a, as a, a graphic or something, you know, you'd have this one coordinated group on one side and just this mishmash of infighting and people destroying each other on the other. And if all of those people that were fighting and destroying each other could just turn and face the system for one day, we could bring the whole system down in one day. You know, if we simply stop complying with it, I've been saying this for years, you know, if we just withdraw all support from this system, you imagine if no one in the world used a credit card for a day, Wall Street would crash. The entire financial system would go into absolute chaos. And all the people sitting in, in these big, um, you know, stock market exchanges looking at the numbers would be going, oh my God, the numbers aren't changing. What am I going to do? What's happened to my life? The numbers aren't moving on the screen. They just, they would freak out. The whole system would freak out if we stopped complying with it. But we, we don't. We, we do all these things that the system tells us to do. We march in the street and end up in violent confrontations with the police because that's the way they push it. We petition the government. We ask them to please be a nicer slave master. You know, what are we doing? I mean, these are just people. They're just people who, who just write all this stuff on paper and we just do what we're told. It's ridiculous. You know, and we, we try all these, these violent actions and methods they give us to stop it. Like I said, we should just stay home. If the whole world stayed home, what are they going to do? What can they do? Come to send the police to your house and tell you that you're breaking the law by spending the day with the family? I yeah. mean, you know, there's nothing they can do if we stop complying. There's absolutely nothing. Not there's, not an, there's, not, there's not enough jails, police, or, or anything to process everybody. As a, no. matter, as a matter of fact, I wish they would literally try to arrest everybody. Yeah, once. I mean, that's what I mean. There's the nothing, the nothing they the could paperwork, do. The paperwork alone would grind the system to a halt. It's incredible. <laughs> People can't see the simplicity of non-compliance. It's, it's really that simple. You know, total non-compliance. Just refuse to comply. I mean, kill what it. if they showed up through a war and nobody <laughs> came? Kill you know? it with, kill it with their own red tape. Just, just the non-compliance alone would create so much red tape that the system would implode it on yeah, itself. You know, it's, so I'm trying to promote that for the 15th of every month, and let's see if we can build the numbers. And hopefully, a year from now, we'll have millions of people doing it, and then we can just say, okay, well, let's do it today. And then if we don't bring out a difference, let's continue it to tomorrow and the next day and the next mm -hmm. day. Hey, Matt, so, by the way, um, quick question. I know you've been busy, I've been busy, et cetera. I haven't had a chance to ask this, really. Um, I noticed that, you know, for when you're a guest on other shows and stuff, that that some sometimes you're able to put it up and sometimes not. How can I get you my content, like, um, that, you know, you to upload to your channel that, you know, for when well, you've I been just, on I my just, 
I just download it. If I do an interview with someone, I just download it from their YouTube and re-upload it to mine, or I get the MP3 and do it. It's been depending on bandwidth. I mean, half, yeah. half the shows, half the interviews I'm on, I post on my channel. Half of them I don't. It just depends on where I am and what yeah. bandwidth I've got and how much time I've got. Totally understandable. That's what I was just asking if there's if there's any way I can I can help you, like you know, like get the snail mailing you a disc with with it or yeah, like, I, move, like I, I move around so much, it's hard <laughs> to mail it to you. That's the problem. You yeah, see. yeah. I was just curious it'll, if it'll there's work, any. Yeah. I was just curious if there's anything I, I could do to help in that regard because I'm always happy to assist in any way I can. So. Well, you know, we'll just see. I don't like giving anyone access to my channel, so we'll just, understand. We'll just see. Um, but it'll it'll work out. Everything works out in the end. I understand. I'm just you know, only about happy half the help. interviews I do get get uploaded. Probably about about two thirds of them I even post. Some of them I I, I do and I, I can't even remember the stations. <laughs> I don't get the audio and people. I don't know whether people hear it or not, but yeah, it, there's probably probably um, 20 interviews that I've done in the last um, year or two years that, that I haven't posted at all. So oh, by, somewhere, so, you know. By, 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 the, by the way, um, just a quick update. I, I think I shut this guy up. Um, you know, he responded say, saying, like, oh, Chicago, call that U.S.? And I said, like I said, you caught me. Chicago's in North Korea. Duh, everyone knows that. And I said, I like Swiss cheese, like Kim Jong Un. Oh, nuclear diarrhea. Oh, my slow asshole. LOL, LOL, LOL. You respond to people like that. They don't know what to do. You're being lighthearted. You're just being funny and silly. You're not falling for their bullshit. And sooner rather than later, they just give up because you end up being a dry well. I mean, I just kind of, you know, paradigm shift and educational comedy, like, that's half the point. Not only is it easier for people to, to learn when things are entertaining, obviously, but it's hard for, for people to, to, to goad you and bait you and, and, you know, lock you into that psychopathic meme if you're sitting there just in a good freaking mood no matter what and just looking at it for what it is and just being like, okay, well, they're funny, so I'll just be funny back. And then they'll shut up because I just blue screen of death their brain. It's, it's, it's another one of those simple ways to, um, to fight tyranny that, like you said, people don't know it's so simple. You know, it, in and of itself, it's a form of non-compliance to, to not comply comply with hate to just be like okay i'm just gonna i'm just gonna laugh and if the other person is hateful then you know cool yeah well i don't hate the people that i i come back at sometimes i just i just do it out of pure frustration yeah just pure frustration like oh my god another one you know okay you want to give me a mouthful have one back have a nice day goodbye yeah and well i've got a different attitude now when i say have a nice day to people you realize <laughs> the etymology of the word nice you know, which means to be ignorant, stupid, and uninformed. So, um, yeah, you know, nice, nice means to be stupid, means to be ignorant, means to be uninformed, means to not know. That's the origins of the word. So when I say to people, yeah, have a nice day, I'm kind of saying, yeah, well, just, just continue on being a drone. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, sometimes you've got to give it back a little bit and, and you just want it. But I, I do it out of frustration. I, really <laughs> I mean, I think if we, we could um, just... I mean, if you see something that someone says and you think, oh, look, that's a silly idea, but, you know, there's something to it that could work, be nice to them when you talk to them about it. Offer some expansion on the idea. Don't just go and throw someone into a hole, tell them what you think of them, call them some name or whatever, and don't offer anything constructive. Mm -hmm. What's that about? Oh, spe that oh, oh speaking of which, he just resorted to just calling me a faggot. And I just said, oh, of course I'm a faggot. <laughs> I, I, just said, I just said, of course I'm a faggot. What else could I be? He's getting real frustrated. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's it's just an energy exchange, and, and it's the wrong energy. It's from people being disconnected from source. So they've got to do this. They've got to attack you like this and just keep baiting you. And when you try to point it out to them, they just keep going, and it becomes this energy thing. And then you find you're getting sucked into it as well, and you find there's energy strings that are connecting you to Exactly. It's just this energy harvest that you're getting off each other, and really you're only doing it because you're disconnected from source. Totally. That's, that's why I laugh, because it's not worth – getting energetically engaged it's it's more worth my time to just laugh it off because well yeah you know if you can it's unimportant if you're going to post an insult to someone post it in such a way that maybe it's, it's constructive for someone else to read it um you know i mean mm -hmm. yeah even when, when i post insults to people i try to make them so over the top that they become humorous so. mm -hmm. oh yeah exactly but by, by the by the way you know you know you know what my like my favorite comeback of all of all time is as long as we're on the topic it, it, it's funny because it's silly and people don't know what to say if you respond saying you bloody afterbirth of a lesbian clusterfuck like <laughs> like, like how is anybody supposed to come back to that i know the first well, time, yeah. the, the, the first time it was used on me i was like what <laughs> 
I was like, what? Like, I didn't even, like, I was paralyzed. I didn't even know how to respond because it's like, how do you respond to something that ridiculous and that silly? <laughs> well, yeah, at least, you know, funny creative insults can be somewhat constructive in some way, but I, I don't know about that one. It's a little bit, uh, a bit I, it's, I know, it's, 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 it's very crass, but a lot of the funniest stuff is. Some things are funny just be, just because they're so crass and stupid, you know? Yeah, well, that's true. I, yeah. I can agree. Yeah, he he, tra- he tried he tried replying um, again. I'm just going to respond with, "Ask me on a date already." <laughs> but um, I'm going to have to go soon because uh, it's getting close up to two o'clock. I've got to do some stuff at two o'clock. Yeah, I'm I'm I just love all this touring you're doing, Max, and I'm really sorry that the Rock the Farm thing isn't going to work out. I know um, you said Andy's having some. So I'm glad you like it. It's really draining on me, but I'm glad you like it. Hey, you know what? I I, I I hope that eventually you make enough money on Patreon so that it's not so draining, so that you know you can um, do things more in a bit of an, an ease and flow way. That's um that's that's easier on you. Speaking I'd love, speaking I'd of which, to, I'd love to be able to get an assistant. I really would. I'd love to be able to afford to pay one, and I'd love to be able to afford to not have to do all the stuff that I do, you know, it's been really hard. It really has. I mean, YouTube's suppressing everything. I've never, I've never uh, monetized my account. And seeing, you know, and seeing as you, is the Patreon that I set up for you is really kind of your only bread and butter right now. Why don't you put that out there before we forget and Katarina can put hers out there to anybody that wants to support her. Let's, uh, seeing as we're kind of coming to, uh, to the end because you're running out of time, let's, let's get all that information out, out there. And, you know, if anybody wants to, wants to be of, of help, you know, as little as, as a dollar a month. I mean, I've, uh, uh, you know, PSEC has a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash PSEC media. Max is forward slash Max Egan, you know, patreon.com forward slash Max Egan, and Katarina's is um, forward slash uh, Katarina Roy, right? Yep. Yeah, so, um, you know. Well, you'll find everything on the Crow House, my website, thecrowhouse.com. You'll find all the links to all that there, so. Yep. Yeah, but thanks for, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, I just, I, I just wanted to make sure to mention it. You could also find Katarina's on katarinaroy.com as well. Um, she's got a, a, a website with lots of interesting stuff and, um, your Patreon's linked on there too, isn't it, Katarina? Yes, it is. Yep. Thought so. Thought so. Uh, Kristen, and I'm pretty sure Kristen doesn't have a YouTube, or excuse me, a Patreon, but I know she's got a YouTube. Um, forward slash Chrissy Sparkle, I think? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how, how, how do you, how, how do you spell that? It's K R I S S Y Sparkle. Okay. Called normally. And um, uh, Kristen, is there obviously because we're w- kind of winding down on the time here? Um, anything else uh, you know you want to say about all this that didn't get said? Because obviously all all of us talk quite a bit, and we all have a lot to say. So. Uh, well, I wanted to just say that um, I appreciate what you said, Max, about focusing more on love, letting that be what guides you instead of you know hate. That is something that. I have been doing, although to me, I'm just, when I said what I did, I'm just trying to be authentic with the fact that there, I don't even know if he's I, I, I know There's exactly what you, I know exactly what you meant, Di, I really do, it's just the, the, the thing of, and I've done it as well, This is I didn't mean to interrupt, but as I've done it as well, is, and the problem is that the system itself is just a meme. So all of that energy that you're focusing on it in, in the form of hatred, it's just going nowhere. It's just dissipating. It's just disempowering you because you're not focusing it against something that actually exists. It's just an idea, you know. And, um, and that's a big fault, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, and I also, I totally see what you're saying. And sometimes it is, even though I get that, it is hard for me to separate it as, you know, it's just something, it's uh, like it's a meme. It's a program that exists in our minds. And then that kind of, at the same time of that, that's just like kind of jolts me awake and I'm like, okay, then it really sinks in that, yeah, just because these people have power, they only have power because we believe it. And that always, I just find that idea so interesting. And I well, also like what... And they confound mm-hmm. us with the language as well. When you're trying to talk to them about it, they're being so polite and giving you absolutely no leeway at all. And they're confounding mm-hmm. you with the language. And I've done whole shows about that as well. But you can do the same back to them. If you learn how to talk in a nice, calm, polite way, you can ask them questions which will actually have them absolutely squirming and you can educate people around you while you're doing it. But anyway, continue, please. Sorry, I keep interrupting. Sorry. Well, it's okay. You're, I, I like what you say. I do find that interesting and Dave's taught me a lot about that, about really using the dipl- diplomacy as a really good tool. And, you know, yeah, they can talk you in circles and the whole political correctness and 
the, the courtesy. They, you could just talk in circles and never get answers. And that's a lot of what happens, you know, when people question politicians. They just talk up this beautiful painting, and then uh, you realize that there's there's no meat to it, and they just talked in a giant circle. But um, the biggest thing that I think is really going to help me more, and this is kind of what Katarina's been doing, is just more in-person interaction with people and kind of forging a sense of community with people, connecting a little more. I've also been kind of going hermit mode, and I'm learning to accept that that's a thing about my mood. And um, I'm coming out of a depression as of right now. And, like, when I'm depressed, it's really hard for me to even talk to close friends. So the idea of going out and being the change and inspiring people has been something I've had no energy for, and I've had no idea of how to even begin. But now I'm kind of seeing... um, I can chill, and some days I'm not going to want to be in the mood for that, but other days maybe I am going to be, and I have more courage about it now. So I'm really getting tired of wasting my whole day on Facebook, and yeah, there's been a lot that I've learned from it, but I'm so ready to move forward out of that. And I think it's really, that reminder has been really good. Yeah, well, you know, be be a shining light, darling. Be a shining light to your family and your people around you and lead by example in what you do. And don't don't take a backward step to them. Stand your ground, but be nice about it. If they're ordering you around to do things, well, just question this authority that they seem to think they have over you and, and, and treat them as an equal, and you'll find that that will provide a huge awakening for them. So you will be making a difference in the world simply by changing the way you feel about yourself and the way you interact with those that are closest to you. Yes, that is also something that I haven't, Part of me was buying into society's ideas of success and where I have to be. It, for one thing, not only does it make me have a sense of dread as where I am right now, because I'm not, I don't know all the answers of where I'll end up. It makes me really scared. But also it's been that I have to have this grandiose idea of where I'm going to end up and the kind of impact I'm going to have on people that I've just been neglecting and discounting the impact that I have on the people closest to me. When in reality, that is like, that closeness and that level of impact that I have over a few people is so meaningful that who knows how deeply I can impact them and they can impact me and how much us supporting each other could really go, you know, how far it could go. And yeah, like what you said about kind of asking questions to maybe my family, if, you know, they're asking something of me that's a little much, that has been very relevant. It's a very, it's a good thing because I've let my anger get out of control sometimes. And it just spirals and, like, nothing productive comes out of it. And now I'm just like, ugh, I can swallow my ego enough to where I want product something productive to be what comes. I don't want to be... Hey, Kristen? Yeah? <laughs> uh, you know, on topic and everything, this big paradigm shift in educational comedy and things going the way they go. Um, I, I just have to update you on something here that's hilarious. Um... Um, it kind of, kind of, kind of a disclaimer, because, because what I, what I said is a bit <laughs> disgusting, but, um, you know, this guy's like, oh, there'll be a crush, all right, and he's starting to, like, do, he's trying to play the violence card, right? So, I, res- I respond to that saying, your manliness is a turn-on, come stick your man meat into my ignorant, stupid mouth, mmm, hearts. Uh, usually people like him are very homophobic. I'm not gay, obviously, but just playing that kind of card usually shuts them down, because they they don't want to face themselves. They don't want to face their insecurities. They just want to, you know, bash everybody else and lash out. So sometimes just a quick little, just a quick little thing like that will make, will make, will make them face themselves, and they'll be like, "Oh man, now I got to face myself." But listen, I think that was a, that was a beautiful talk, um, uh, Katrina. It really was. Um, uh, Kristen, 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 sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Uh, two two Ks. The it's names all... wrong. Two Ks. Yeah. That was that was that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. That was very heartfelt. Um, little yeah. talk just gave them. But I'm I'm gonna have to run, folks, because it's quarter okay. two. Not a problem. This was this was, yeah. this was beautiful. This is beautiful, and 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 I just I love having these conversations with you guys. And everybody says just such brilliant and true stuff, and it's just. It's just, it's just really just the energy of these types of, of conversations is just really awesome. And um, uh, Richard Hamilton would have been here, but um, he's uh, in school today. He's uh, training to be, um, you know, an EMT, um, fire and, and rescue, and you know, all of all of that stuff. So um, he's he's in class. No worries. Well, I've got to go. Um, Not a love problem. To you all, absolute pleasure to talk to you, Dave. You too, Katarina, and you too, uh, Kristen. 
Yeah. And, um, Pity Fair I'm not going to see you in Ohio, but I'm sure we'll catch up again one day. And a- I'll, absolutely. I'll to, to you next time. Oh yeah, totally. This is this has been absolutely great, and you know, thank thank you all so much for for coming on. This has just been absolutely freaking wonderful, and I love it. So thank you all so much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now the rest of us could stay on for a little bit. It doesn't. It doesn't. You know really matter. Mac, Max can go and, and we can wrap up what we want to wrap up. But I, I just think that, that all the synchronicities that uh, that have been happening during this thing, starting with the, w- with the malfunctions, all the way, way up to like whoever the heck, you know, this person is. Like I didn't even read most of what this person said to me because it's wholly irrelevant and I, I don't need to waste our time or the listener's time with, with crap like that. But I just kind of pointed out the highlights because it was so synchronistic. I mean, you know, we're talking about unconditional love and being tolerant and so on and so forth. And like of all the times for someone like this to pop up, you know, like I can't ignore the synchronicity of it. It's just it really it really is that practical application of unconditional love, because like we're saying, you know, love isn't all Pollyanna bunnies, kitties. Sometimes it's just like. Just like, you know, acknowledging, hey, that person's a jerk and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm refusing to fall, you know, in, into their trap. I'm not going, I'm not going to get sucked in, you know, to their shit. And, you know, you can be annoyed about it and whatever and still not get sucked into their shit. And I think this is just one of those perfect examples of, hey, you know, some people just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy. And, and that's, that's on them. That's not on you. Who you decide to be is up to you. And I decided to be someone who is just laughing at this and finds it funny. That's my choice. That's my taking personal responsibility and owning my emotions. This person, who is he to me anyway? He's got no power over me unless I let him. Who is he to me? Nobody. So I think that's, that's very, just, it was just very synchronistically, you know, important. And just, just showing that when people like this pop up, you don't, you don't have to let them ruin your day. That's what they want. People like that come in and try to energetically vampire you and they're trying to ruin your day. They get off on it. But if you don't let them, what can they do? Honestly, what can they really do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think that's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, so what else has been up with uh, both of both of you that um, maybe there wasn't enough time to say that you want to get out there? I know we've all been having some very interesting experiences lately. So anything I else actually, you want to share? I actually, while I was listening to you guys talk, an article came up on Facebook about um, 20 manipulation tactics that narcissistic abusers will do. And I'm like, holy shit, the lady at work does like so many of these. So... I think that this is a really good thing for me because I'm going to be going and talking to the owner of the company tomorrow. And uh, it's just nice to have some stuff to back it up as to why I don't want to work the same shift as her. Yeah, totally. I mean, you've you've also shared a lot of um, <clears throat> really good articles about narcissism and has, have even wrote your own. Um, if people go to... KatarinaRoy.DeviantArt.com and then go into her journal section. Um, there's at least one or one or two in there about um, you know deal, dealing with narcissists, and then they link to to other uh, journals and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm a little otherwise preoccupied because I'm I'm about ready to go too, but I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. Kristen, any anything you want to share? I know you've been uh, you've been facing uh, quite a bit of stuff too. Um, I've had this weekend after having like one of the scariest moments of my life. I had the best weekend in a long time. Nice. And yeah, for a lot of different reasons, um, including talking to you and Katarina, I've had so much hope, and I've been able to deal with like issues with programming and deep fears and insecurity and just depression and anger coming up in such a different way than I ever have. Right um, on. High five. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And it feels so good. Like, for example, today's been a really triggering day for me. Um, and of course, you know, there's going to be some contrast after having that good of a weekend. Also, but- Schumann resonance stuff <laughs> happened yesterday or on uh, Sunday. So I've, I've just yeah. been noticing there's been like this period of just like intense triggering. Totally. Yeah, oh. uh, like... I got in a little bit of trouble with the law. My boyfriend and I got a citation, but like, it's been so different. And today I found out, um, stuff 
that happened a, a little bit ago that I'm he- finding out about now that's bringing up some deep fear in me and insecurity, but it's like, I am so beyond the point now of, well, I'm not so beyond the point, but I'm to the <coughs> point where I don't to let that shit, like, dictate my every move. I don't want to go from the place of self-destruction because I'm lashing out anymore. Like, I, I'm really just, like, normally if I was in this bad mood, not only would I have probably hurt myself a little bit and, um, you know, been, like, just a shut-in, I wouldn't have tried to talk to you guys at all. Now I'm just, like, I feel terrible and... It has not been a good day, but, like, instead of pushing away friends, I've decided to talk to friends. It's stuff like that makes mm-hmm. a difference. Yeah, totally. Oh, um, by the, by, the, by the way, just briefly, um, that, that guy replied a big, long thing that I'm not going to read, but um, this one part said, just have to thank you for not serving, okay? And I responded saying, serve me your chalk in my mouth. You. <laughs> I'm trying my best to gross this guy out. I really am. <laughs> Again, nothing against gays. I'm not gay, whatever. Whoever's gay, that's cool. That's your thing. I'm not bashing. I'm just really, really seeing if I can gross this guy out. Like, I, I can't even be bothered to read his bullshit. I do a quick skim, make a quick little funny, and then... <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, continue. Yeah, it's just... Uh, and I talked to one of my friends yesterday that he's kind of a random friend that I have at my college, and he's a very interesting person. Um he's very outgoing and uh, will like spark up interesting conversations with me. And so it's always fun talking to him because I love having interesting conversations, but I'm not quite at the point yet where I feel comfortable being the one to spark him up. Um, and we talked a whole bunch yesterday, a lot about what's going on in my life right now. And um, he was asking me why I'm, I told him a little bit about my changes, about why I'm so open about my shitty feelings and my insecurity and my fears. And he said, why, why do you admit that? And I was like, Well, I admit it because I'm no longer to the point where I want to shove it down. And I said, and I'm no longer, I want to be responsible for it instead of um, letting it dictate my whole life. And that's like, and when I'm in that mindset, it's so interesting to describe because so much of the time when I would get, when my negative feelings and fear would come up, it would be like a switch from kind of a reasonable mindset to, it's like self-destruction and letting it be a reason that everything is going to fall apart. And now it's just like when it comes up, I'm choosing to say it's I'm feeling this way for a reason and I can't make it go away. I don't really want to make it go away, but I I'm choosing to have faith that there could be something more. And that I'm instead of saying, well, obviously that's the reason why everything's going to go to shit. I'm saying, why not try to do what's in my power to make it better and just let myself feel this way right now, basically. <clears throat> I think really all, put it into work. I think this yeah. is totally proof of just how much you've been growing and expanding. And I've noticed that, like, you're not really running and avoiding anymore. You know, not really. You're just, well, you've decided that, you know, you're just going to face things head on. And I just, I think that's really cool. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I've been really proud of you both, to be honest, because you both just making, like, so much progress just like leaps and bounds it's it's completely amazing and i absolutely love it and i love you both thank you you're welcome dude, dude. Oh, today is contrasty but good man <laughs> today is just so good and i'm and i'm glad you volunteered to join us Kristen. i i know in in the past you might not have because you might have been felt feeling a bit triggered or whatever but you faced it and you joined us and it was just oh it was, it was just really wonderful to have both of you and Max Egan on the same call like like really the like like the only thing missing was Rich you know I mean I think that's really funny because um, there's no way in hell that even a week ago I could have been this triggered and then not only like talked with friends at all but like gotten on a call and then spoke on a call so I feel pretty good about that and just happy that I got this get in on it and hear what you guys had to say. Totally. It was such a topic. Yeah. Yeah. And and I know that when, you know, the last time, um, you know, uh, when you met Max in person, like, you know, there, <clears throat> there really <clears throat> wasn't a lot of time for you to, to talk to him directly. And plus from um, what I understand, the weather was also not exactly the, yeah. the greatest. And it just wasn't, wasn't really the most perfect opportune day. Even, even Max um, said that the, the weather was was kind of kind of crummy, and and he really didn't um you know um like that aspect of it. 
Yeah, the weather, it was rainy, and it rained for, like, a majority of the time that the event was open, and we, um, there weren't as many people for that reason, and his time yeah. to speak was pretty late at night. Like, not only had everyone almost already left because of the rain, but his time to speak was at probably around 9 o'clock, maybe 10, and yeah. the only people that were there really were people that were there going to listen to music. Which was cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, it's 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 a shame it's not going to be happening this year again. I know it was originally planned. Um, I was kind of hoping the weather might be better this year for everything. So everything's just been it's it's just everything's been interesting, and I I think twenty twenty seventeen is going to be a really interesting year for a lot of events and stuff. Not not only with with Max, but just the world stage in general, and, and 2018 is going to be even more interesting, I'm sure. So um, we've all we've all talked a lot, and um, you know between my my throat still being a bit eh, and um, you know Katarina, you woke up not too long ago, and so on. Um, I think we're all all in agreement that uh, we should probably bring this to a full close and give things a rest. So thank you everybody for for listening. Um, you know check out. Uh, KatarinaRoy.com and TheCrowHouse.com and, you know, um, we already gave um, Kristen's uh, YouTube. Um, she's also at ThinkingKristen.DeviantArt.com, although she doesn't use that that much because she just hasn't had has time, but, you know. Anyway, everybody, thank you for joining us. Love you all. Peace out. Catch you later. And everybody have an awesome day, night, whatever it is on your part of the planet. Say goodbye, all. Bye. See you later, taters.